Hello, welcome to Ada Majlis Media Project in the Institute for Development and Diplomacy in Ada University. My name is Anastasia Lavrina, and today we have a special guest as a member of Azerbaijani Parliament, Tural Ganjaliv, who is also co-chairman of the EU-Azerbaijan Parliamentary Cooperation Committee. Mr. Ganjaliv, hello and welcome to our program. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Uh, these days, we commemorate the victims. Two years ago, during the 44-day patriotic war, Armenia bombed two biggest Azerbaijani cities, uh, Ganja, Barda, which is located far away from the military battle. Um, in two years after, the pain is still exists. We do remember everything. Uh, but we cannot say that Armenian terrorism stopped and we are protected and secured not to face it again. Could you share with us your memories about these days and also what you think about the current situation? Yes, as you have rightly mentioned, today's uh, these days we are commemorating the uh, serious violation and attack against the second largest city in Azerbaijan by the Armenian armed forces two years ago, as you remember, and as we all remember, when we are liberating our internationally recognized territories for, from brutal occupation, Armenian armed forces, in order to stop Azerbaijani advance, advancement, started shelling indiscriminately the civilian population in different places of Azerbaijan. And one of the heinous crimes that Armenian armed forces committed was against the city of Ganja, the second largest city in the center of Azerbaijan, very, very far from the combat zone. Unfortunately, this demonstrated how uh, heinous crimes that Armenian political military leadership uh, can commit, uh, nevertheless, of the situation. And uh, as Armenian forces attacking Azerbaijani cities, they were committing, of course, the war crimes, crimes against humanity. As we know, there are special category of crimes in international law, in international humanitarian law. The very gross violation of the international law is the same war crimes that we have seen. Unfortunately, this is not only, uh, uh, we are talking about the ongoing uh, uh, the, the war crimes against Azerbaijanis, against Azerbaijan state and people, and still we are suffering from the mine problem. Still, even uh, today, uh, we have received very sad news that the car of the embassy of Azerbaijan uh, was shot. We don't know exactly in who Washington, did it in, in, in Washington. States. Yes, in, in the United States. We don't know uh, still who is in behind uh, of this crime, but it is very clear that uh, Azerbaijani uh, civilian infrastructures, Azerbaijani civilian population have been uh, the target of uh, terrorists for last three decades. Well, let me ask you an additional question yes. about diplomats. As you rightly mentioned, the car of uh, Azerbaijani embassy uh, in the United States of America was uh, shot at night. And, uh, you know, if we follow the history during the last three decades, we know that there are special uh, groups, radicals, uh, Armenian radicals who live in different countries, and Azerbaijani diplomats become the first targets. And even today, when we speak uh, at the official level with the Armenian government about the possible coexistence, about the importance to sign peace treaty, uh, from your diplomatic experience, do you think that there is a special threat uh, against our diplomats in different countries may appear from those groups who do not want to see long-lasting peace establishment in the region. Absolutely. There is a threat against Azerbaijani diplomats, against Azerbaijani embassy personnel, against the premises of Azerbaijan in uh, different countries. We have seen recently the attacks against of Azerbaijani embassies in France, in Lebanon, in different European countries. Now, this time in Washington, um, so it means that we, of course, we uh, are ready for peace. We are ready for the peaceful coexistence as uh, two nations in the South Caucasus. We are ready for peace. That's why we are reconstructing and rebuilding liberated territories. And this is the, our manifest that we would like to achieve this durable, just peace as soon as possible. Uh, now we are in the re new reality. The conflict is over. Now we are working with... Uh, hopefully, are the Armenian side, that they will agree finally to sign final peace deal. But at the same time, we have to be very vigilant. You know, uh, yesterday's attack against Azerbaijani embassy in Washington against the car, 
demonstrates that uh, nevertheless we have to be very cautious uh, and uh, the security of personnel of Azerbaijan diplomats working in different countries must be provided and we have to be very vigilant because uh, as a diplomat I, I have worked in Canada, in Czech Republic, sometimes we saw radical Armenian uh, organizations uh, disguising under different names, attacking even uh, many, many years ago, Azerbaijani uh, embassies, a different kind of events. They were trying to provocate, you know, this kind of um, uh, negative uh, 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 negative steps that we have seen many times from Armenian so radical organizations. So this is like a systematic character Systematic, test. yes, exactly. We should also remember the beginning of 19th, so the first Karabakh war, which resulted in the uh, occupation of 20% of Azerbaijani lands, Pojali genocide and many other acts, uh, genocide committed by the Armenian sites. And after, in 2016, different attempts to provoke the situation. And finally, as we already mentioned, Genja, Barda, Tartar, and many other destinations which were targeted during the 44-day um, patriotic war, which resulted in the restoration of territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. So my next question to you, from the perspective of international law, why do you think there is no enough attention to the problem which Azerbaijan face even now. It's Armenian terrorism, it's a mass graves which we discover on our liberated lands, exactly. and this is also mines, the mining process which takes a lot of time. Absolutely, you are, re you are right that uh, uh, regarding the, the conflict, uh, previous conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and currently after the post-conflict in the new realities, we are still facing this uh, problems, war crimes, the consequences of the war crimes committed against Azerbaijanis. But unfortunately, uh, the reaction of the international community, of the international organization are not sufficiently enough and they are not based on the justice and on the international law. Um, if you want, we can call it double standards. Sometimes it is negligence, negligent uh, uh, attitude towards uh, from the international organizations. So we would like to draw attention of the international community uh, right now with your question to the problem of the consequences. Though we have liberated our international recognized territories, the conflict is over, but still we are facing those challenges. You have uh, mentioned uh, mine problems. There are still around 1 million mines implanted by uh, Armenia. Still, uh, after the end of the conflict, after the signing of trilateral statement in 2020 on 10th of November, we have lost 250 people uh, were killed and wounded. Uh, still, there is no any reaction from the international organizations. We also, like you have said, uh, many uh, previous attacks against Azerbaijan. Armenians committed war crimes, and we would like to draw the attention of international organizations that there must be international tribunal established. And if we would like to see justice prevailing, we have to uh, bring those responsible people who committed these crimes before the justice. You know, in international law, there is a uh, state responsibility. As we have mentioned, for the 30 years, Armenia uh, is responsible as a country, as a state. At the same time, there is a criminal individual responsibility. Not only states, but uh, specific persons who ordered, who commanded uh, these uh, attacks against Azerbaijani civilians, they also must be brought uh, before the justice. Uh, this is very important. Criminal individual responsibility uh, must be, uh, um, we have to pay attention. Uh, let me remind you that after the First World War was over, the Kaiser Germany and its, uh, uh, its leader, uh, Kaiser, uh, uh, want, uh, the, the, the Allied powers who won the First World War, they wanted to uh, bring before the justice the Kaiser of Germany. But unfortunately, he escaped to Netherlands and mm -hmm. Netherlands didn't allow Kaiser to uh, stand before the court. After the Second World War, when uh, we defeated Nazism, Nazism and the Germany when defeated, Nuremberg uh, military tri tribunal was established exactly. and all those people who were responsible for committing uh, uh, war crimes were uh, be brought before the justice. And this N Nuremberg tribunal, this uh, kind of uh, special military tri tribunals must be established also for those uh, uh, criminals who committed genocide in Hojala, who attacked Janza, Berda, who implanted mines in the territories of and mass graves, as I mentioned, mass graves, in Hojava yeah. and region. Yeah, this is war crime. Within exactly. just one year, just not even one year, 
three places were discovered by Azerbaijanis. And I'm afraid that it, this is not the last time. We, I, unfortunately. unfortunately, yeah, I, my estimation that we will uh, still uh, we will um, uh, we will uh, discover this kind of graves because still there are four thousand Azerbaijanis missing. There, there is no and there information. Is no information and about hope, that. Uh, probably all these Azerbaijanis were executed and they were buried in mass graves that we have already discovered in different places in the liberated region. Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Genjalev, another very important issue I would like to ask you. Just recently, uh, during the meeting in the Prague, in Czech Republic, um, President of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, had a chance to meet uh, with the uh, Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, with the participation of French leader Emmanuel Macron and Charles Michel. In that meeting, it was agreed that two sides recognize the territorial integrity of each other, which is a very important. By doing that, Armenia recognized that Karabakh is an integral part of Azerbaijani Republic. Absolutely. That means that during all of those three decades, Armenia recognized its own occupation of Azerbaijani lands. And that gives the right to Azerbaijan side, as you mentioned, to bring the deal before the court of international court. And all of those committed the crime in Armenia should give the responsibility. Can we use this opportunity to bring responsible for this? A very good, interesting question. Yes, as you said, uh, Armenia uh, in Prague meeting, uh, not only Armenia, the f f quadrilateral meeting, and as a result of which, the statement was adopted. All European community and especially uh, Armenia recognized uh, the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. And there is also a special reference to the United Nations Charter, which directly says that the, there is a territorial integrity sovereignty of each country and uh, the, the, the countries must recognize reciprocally each other's territorial integrity. So this is very good news for Azerbaijan and for the world community. And of course, it also means that, uh, as you are mentioning, Armenia, by recognizing territorial integrity of Azerbaijan, Armenia also admits that for the third, for 30 years, uh, it uh, took on the uh, occupation. It occupied and took on the, its uh, occupation, the territories of Azerbaijan. And uh, consequently, Armenia must pay reparation uh, because of the war crimes that it committed and also because of the occupation that lasted for three decades. And also uh, persons who were responsible for this must be again brought before the justice. And at the same time, just I would like to uh, mention that uh, in neither in the statement nor uh, in any uh, oral statement delivered after the Prague meeting, uh, no uh, the name of Karabakh or uh, the residents of Karabakh was mentioned in any statement because it demonstrates that it is solely internal issue of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is not discussing its internal issue, is its internal region, Karabakh region, or uh, Azerbaijan is not discussing the people, uh, the uh, residents living in Karabakh with third parties, with neither with Armenia nor with any third parties. This is very also good news. It means that uh, as president of Azerbaijan mentioned that uh, Azerbaijan uh, it will be dealing with those ethnic Armenians who uh, are the citizens of Azerbaijan, and we will integrate them into the Azerbaijani society, and we, we know how and when and uh, in which direction this process will take us, because it, this is an uh, internal issue of Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan will be dealing with these questions uh, just itself. You know, you touched a very important issue. You're a member of parliament, uh, exactly from the city of Hankendi. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you also speaking, uh, have a chance to receive some messages from ethnic Armenians who are living in Hankendi at the moment. So from your own vision, how do you see the future development, the coexistence, how the situation is being changed, whether the people who are living there now still uh, sending any kind of messages asking to help, because we know that many ethnic Armenians who are living uh, in Hankan, the city of Azerbaijan, uh, want to integrate. They ask the help and assistance from the Azerbaijani side. How the current situation is going there? Yes, I, I am a member of parliament from Hankan, of course, my constituency also includes ethnic Armenians living there as Azerbaijani citizens. But, but my understanding is that after the, uh, this conflict is over, uh, hopefully when 
uh, the situation and uh, process of normalization is go going in a good direction. I think that all Armenians living there, uh, they have only one choice to, ag to be agreed, to be integrated into the Azerbaijani society because as uh, Azerbaijani citizens, they will enjoy uh, full rights and privileges and all, as, like we all Azerbaijanis, 10 million Azerbaijanis are enjoying currently. There will be no specific kind of uh, specific privileges for them, as there is no any privilege for any specific group in Azerbaijan. All we are Azerbaijanis, we uh, enjoy our rights, we have constitution of the Republic of Azerbaijan, we have legislation, we all are equal before the uh, courts, before the law. So it means that if Armenians living there, if they accept uh, becoming the citizens of Azerbaijan, of course they will have very good uh, opportunities to continue their lives. Otherwise, if they not, if they will not agree to become the citizens of Azerbaijan, uh, of course uh, they have to choose different place of residence for themselves. Because in Azerbaijan, in the territory of Azerbaijan, there is only uh, legislation of Azerbaijan that is operating. If you are living here in this territory, you have to have your Azerbaijani passport. And by the way, we are talking about those Armenians who were living there. Uh, before the 1991, before the Armenian aggression started. So all those people who uh, illegally were transferred to Karabakh region after 1991, excuse me, they are uh, illegal residents and they have to go back to their uh, original places. Or the but, Armenian government has to take responsibility yes, over exactly. these people. By the way, we have seen uh, with the liberation of uh, Lachin, the villages of uh, Zabukh and Sus, we, we saw those illegal residents who were from uh, Syria, from Lebanon, from Middle East. They were ethnic Armenians from that part of the world. And now uh, it's the responsibility of the Armenian government uh, to transfer them back. Uh, I think that, yes, again, uh, th there, is a, there are two uh, options. Either you become the citizens of Azerbaijan, live according to the laws of Azerbaijan, or you can choose uh, uh, the, any place of uh, residents in different countries and by the way in the Republic of Azerbaijan there is all the, there are people uh, only uh, having Azerbaijani citizenship with Azerbaijani passports and if for example in case there are any there are people who are without citizenship of course we have legislation also dealing and um, uh, dealing with the problem and all these issues will be addressed uh, uh, with its own way one final question I have to you uh... We know that Azerbaijan is very active on the international arena. There are so many uh, visits, trips. Uh, Mr. President Dilham Aliyev uh, has uh, almost every week. Coming back from Prague, uh, other week, uh, Mr. President went to Central Asian countries. He visited uh, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Uh, very important visits. And in all meetings, it's being highlighted that Azerbaijan is growing economically. It takes uh, advantage with its uh, geographic position. Everybody is speaking about importance to develop infrastructure, open new projects, energy cooperation, and etc. How do you see the future of this uh, Azerbaijani development on the international base, on the international arena? How do you see the other partners from Europe, from Central Asia countries, do you see the future development of the partnership with our countries? Which particular moments we may expect? And whether we should expect additional question to you that the international community will make all possible things to make sure that in the nearest time the long-lasting peace is established in the region of the South Caucasus. Uh, Azerbaijan is uh, becoming very important player, not only in the region, in the South Caucasus and beyond South Caucasus. We are seeing the <coughs> increasing role of Azerbaijan in the European continent as a reliable partner. Azerbaijan provides and contributes to the energy security of the European Union. Also, Azerbaijan has very important and very uh, constructive relations with its neighbors. Uh, the only uh, the case that is Armenia, which hopefully will be uh, after the signing of uh, peace treaty, we will also have good normal relations. The process, the, the relations will be normalized. But otherwise, uh, Azerbaijan is very important player in the region and beyond. And also, you have mentioned Azerbaijan is conducting very proactive foreign policy. The president of Azerbaijan is uh, visiting uh, different platforms, different international organizations and now 
Central Asia is also one of the important direction uh, for our proactive foreign policy. That's, that means that Azerbaijan is becoming a hub, you know, connecting East with the West. All these important energy uh, transport links are passing through Azerbaijan and not only energy security, also the uh, transport links uh, are very important. Uh, now, because of the geopolitical situation in the world, now Azerbaijan is becoming, the importance of Azerbaijan is becoming even more uh, increasing and that's why we expect that uh, with this, Azerbaijan will have uh, positive uh, leverage, positive impact, not only in the region and in also with its neighbors. Uh, so it means that, again, um, international community also must be interested in having durable, just, uh, peace, stable situation in the South Caucasus. And uh, it only means that uh, without Azerbaijan, you cannot have uh, any important uh, project or important issue addressed. So Azerbaijan is the center of the hub and we hope that our, the role of our country it will be becoming more important even in the near future. Well, Mr. Gajarif, thank you so much for joining our program today and sharing with us your experience. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Just to remind you, watched other Majlis Media Project. I'm Anastasia Lavrina, and our special guest today was uh, Tural Gajarif, member of Azerbaijan Parliament and co-chairman of the EU-Azerbaijan Parliamentary Cooperation Committee. Stay with us and see you in the next edition.